Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Yes She Can Project. Excited, excited is not the word. I'm so happy to be joined by Kat. Hi Kat. Hello Michelle, so nice to see you. Finally we've got all our times and diaries together. I know, it's been months, hasn't it? Yeah. That's <laughs> life with a small business though, isn't it? Yeah, and it children is. and running a <laughs> home and all that bloody stuff. <laughs> like life seems to have got in the way doesn't it for the past like three months (laughs) yeah three years (laughs) (laughs) would you like to give everyone um a brief introduction into who you are and what gorgeous joy you spread around oh michelle you're so lovely well first of all thank you so much for inviting me on your amazing podcast i love what you do i think your message is amazing and um i feel really honored to be on it Um, oh so so my name is kat and my business um that's been going for over 10 years is little folk nursery rhymes so Mm -hmm. basically it's me with my guitar singing nursery rhymes old and new to little ones all across sort of southeast london my little area and their exhausted parents so that is what i do and music and singing are like my complete passions i just love it so much and um i think it's um if you can it's such a cliche but if you can turn your passion into your job it's really amazing because Absolutely. you never you never tire of it because you just mm-hmm. want to keep spreading it more and you want to keep making it better um so it yeah. all started i know one of your um questions to me was that um how did i start doing it yeah. and um basically i was i had two little boys i've got two little boys they're now teenagers ah <laughs> um but i used to work in music television and so i've always oh. always loved music it's just been ever since a kid i've always hummed away written songs i just mm-hmm. love it i was in bands when i was young and you know i've just always loved having music in my life married a and musician. Your family musical i would say so mostly well my husband's a musician he's amazing okay He's amazing. And then we try and force our kids to do music. <laughs> <laughs> you will. <laughs> yeah, you will do music because it is just such a joy. And I think our 15 year old is starting to realize that. Like we've sort of oh. just kept saying, no, you can't give up piano. No, you can't give up piano. Mm-hmm. Just because if you get to a certain age when you can just do it, it's so easy. Yeah. You no. Know? And um, so, but when they were little, I didn't feel, you know, that awful thing about, you know, you're a mum, you'd be feel kicked out of the workforce because you just can't quite make it all work. And Mm -hmm. I just, I saw some women in television just have such a nightmare once they had babies. I just thought, I'm not sure I could ever put myself or my baby through that. And I know some people don't have a choice, but we chose to be as skin as church mice (laughs) and me stay at home rather than do all that and I'm but I'm not a judgy mum I just think whatever you do whether you stay at home whether you go out to work none of us win no that's so exhausting and it's all so difficult so you just try your best at what you feel you can do for your family don't you yeah definitely so I did feel guilty that I wasn't earning money and so I just thought how can I money and long story short two things sort of bashed up against each other so it was the desire to earn a few quid to take the pressure off my husband yeah and also I was helping out at some I sought out lots of music groups for my little ones because obviously I absolutely love music and there were like there were a few going around that we liked um and some of them I'd be like god you could put a bit more welly in than that you know (laughs) but I didn't feel like it was my place (laughs) but then um I used to take them to this adorable group that was a a group that had been going for like 20 years wow and it was run by mums for mums and it had been passed down from mum to mum to mum yeah and then when I was going the lovely lass that was running it Mm -hmm. had to step back because her kids had got older so she couldn't go there all the time yeah but there was no obvious person to take it over i thought but a few (laughs) people said to me cat you sing you love singing you're you know you could do it and i just i didn't really feel i could but then i couldn't bear for the group to dissolve under my watch i just thought how can that legacy just disappear after all that time as well yeah so i did do it and i think i did it for a couple of years and then again, not everybody, but a few people sort of said, Kat, you should earn some money doing this. Like, oh, wow. why don't you why don't you do it? Because you're good at it and da, yeah. da, da. 
so then this little plan formulated and long story short um i sort of got into a little venue that was so sweet to me grow mayo there's a shout out for this amazing community garden in southeast london oh. and um she was just so supportive and said do it here don't mm -hmm. be one of those people that says they're going to do it and don't do it and oh. just give me a percentage just give me a little percentage yeah. towards the hire of the place so I just did it, I took my guitar and I had my first group, which was full of all my mum friends and their babies. Oh, that's but so cool. a few people came that I didn't know. Yeah. And I thought, oh my God, they're like real customers. And then it just kind of, over 10 years, it's just right. morphed and grown and I've gone to different venues and I do festivals. And so I never knew that I was gonna have a business doing nursery rhymes, no. but it was like a really happy accident almost almost like a really organic process as well yeah. because of the things that had happened yeah and I think um no one would ever have had my business plan <laughs> I'm like I really am the tortoise and the hare and finally oh. 10 years in I'm starting to get somewhere with it I think oh, but it's you. been um it's been basically yeah a very slow burn okay. and I've just kept it going but customers are amazing because they sort of they sort of show you the way to go. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's, just, it's like every day you're doing market research without mm -hmm. even knowing it because you've got people coming into every group. The mums say what their kids like. The kids show you what they like because they they will react. And so then you yeah. start seeing the things that work and like little things that they might like and like products oh, have come out of it and mm -hmm. the YouTube channel came out of it and a CD. I recorded a CD album and like all these things wow. I never knew I would make products yeah like who knew that was gonna happen they're gorgeous i had a look on the website Thank and the, you. the little I'm... baby grows with the dog's heart i know and... and like the thing is i am so passionate and i am so anal about everything and i hate that word control freak and everything mm -hmm. but i think if you really care about your customers yeah you want everything to look amazing because yeah, they're giving definitely. you money for it and mm -hmm. so i've been really i'm very thorough yeah I'm very thorough and I never give up. And you, so you can see I, like the passion when you oh, talk about what you I do. I hope so. Yeah. I just, I feel really, I mean, it sounds a bit naff, doesn't it? But I do feel very lucky that I have got this thing, music, singing, mm -hmm. playing, that I love so much. Yeah. It's, it's such a joy for me to do it that I can't believe that I have that in my life as a thing that I always have. Like, yeah. it's that, you know, it's been like my friend it's Aww. just always there and through the good times yeah. the bad times and what i love is the power of music and what you can spread to little kids it's so yeah. important in those early years Definitely. and what i never realized before starting my business was actually how important and i can only say this because i've had feedback it's not me making it up from <laughs> <laughs> from customers who've said to me like i did this post once about like i really worry about Lots of my mum customers are new mums. And I yeah. remember vividly how hard that is, that first oh bit. God. Like I never yeah. will forget it ever. Mm -hmm. So I really feel like a bit of a, you know, like a, a sort of a, a mum of the village, like an older yeah. mum. and Like and, taking them under your wing kind yeah. of thing. And I yeah. love that. I never knew how much I would love trying to make them feel better. Yeah. And trying to see that, yes, it's important that their kids are doing music. And I absolutely love that. But equally, mm -hmm. I really care about how they're doing yeah. and see them forge friendships at my groups. It just Aww. fills me up with joy. I just, yeah. you know, I'll turn away and I'm putting my stuff away and I hear one mum going, does your baby do this? I'm a bit worried, you know, Aww. and just like that sort of camaraderie and like that fighting against everything together yeah. because it's mm -hmm. so hard in those first few months you know yeah and it can feel so isolating as oh well my can't God. it it's and then horrible. the whole covid thing i know i just was so i properly was worried about all these beautiful mums having babies and they couldn't some of them couldn't even have their partners with them and and I then know. some of them like they, the first bit was only made easier for me because mm -hmm. i joined things like the nct and local groups and stuff like right. that and they get you through those people, mm -hmm. even if you might not particularly gel and lots of things. The fact yeah. is you are all in the same boat yeah, and you, you sort of pull along together, don't you? And go, this yeah. is a nightmare. Um, you kind of tread water together. Don't you? <laughs> yeah. So I think that's really surprised me how much 
more my business has become yeah. than just doing nursery rhymes to kids yeah it's like a huge part of your life and you as a person now isn't yeah. it because of the things that you've managed to experience along the way yeah yeah it feels really important now I feel mm -hmm. like it's I've put so much of my life and soul into it yeah and that's not the reason it's important but just the sort of um seeing how people react seeing what people yeah. get from it um and where they go with it yeah. And, you know, I just, yeah, I feel really, really lucky that that's so far so good. <laughs> you know, COVID's tried to knock me off it a bit, but, um, you I know. was going to say, Kat, you took, you spoke about COVID and obviously the majority of what, what you do is in person. Yeah. How difficult was that for you when COVID hit, not being able to have that connection with the kids in the room? Yeah. I mean, it's such a good question, Michelle, because, um, so it was something that I remember it really clearly because it was like the 12th of March, 2020 and Boris did that announcement yeah. and I was, oh my gosh, like overnight my mm. business will be dead. Like there's oh. nothing I can do. I couldn't yeah. see, I couldn't see beyond that announcement. Mm. And um, I just thought, I felt really upset. I mean, I've always known how much I love my business. Yeah. But actually the fact that someone was going to take it away from me, I was pretty devastated. Aww. I was like, I don't know what to, and I sort of slept on it and I was thinking, I really don't want to do it. And then I was beyond lucky because Happity, do you, do you know the amazing platform Happity, yeah. the bookings platform? Um, I was so fortunate because years before, um, when I was, um, still sort of learning the ropes a bit and growing my business i used to do lots of facebook posts and stuff like that and okay. luckily sarah one of the amazing founders of happy along with emily who i met later um oh. sarah got in touch with me because she saw, saw saw my regular posting about my groups yeah so i sort of became an early adopter of happy because she would um we'd have little meetings in cafes and she'd go oh what do you think of this layout and that so i was yeah. seeing the website growing before my eyes and oh, she was wow. growing the business before my eyes and um so i don't know whether it was part of that but on the friday so friday the 13th was a really lucky day for me because <laughs> she phoned me up and she went cat are you up for a challenge if we don't pivot our business i hate that word pivot if we don't pivot <laughs> our business we are dead in the water do you want to come along for the ride and i was Aww. like i said immediately yes although in my heart i was so terrified because i was like i didn't even know my laptop had a camera on it <laughs> <laughs> i was so backward with the technology and then she was like will you do it and so then i had to like get 10 customers together yeah and say look can you try this out and okay. so we were all set up i got my 10 customers i was so grateful we we're going to test it out and see if we could make it work i didn't know what zoom was you know it was all yeah. really out there and didn't mm -hmm. understand any of it she may as well said you know you've got to drive to the moon to do this group because i <laughs> yeah. just like didn't know pick what up it was. an alien on the way <laughs> yeah just can you just sort that out um <laughs> And then I'm sure she won't mind me saying, but so she said, I promise Kat, I'll hold your hand through it because she is brilliant at tech. Okay. And so I thought, okay, Sarah's going to look after me. It'll be okay. <laughs> but then I think on the, it was either the night before or the, even the morning of it. And I'd been testing out microphones all weekend and yeah. cameras and like really stressing out about it. And she said, Kat, I am so sorry. I can't come to your house. My husband's got COVID. And I went, no. what? I can't go live without you. And oh. then she went, don't worry, I will be there on the screen and it'll all be okay. And I had to just throw myself at it. My husband would tell you, I was like all over the shop, panicking, oh. stressed, slightly crying, <laughs> going, I can't do this, I can't do this. But then the minute everyone came on the screen, mm -hmm. we were all so pleased to see each other because we were yeah. all so freaked out by what was going on. Definitely. And I just got my guitar and I sang my songs and all the kids got into it. And oh. I suddenly saw that it could work. Yeah. And I was still a bit unsure about whether there would be connection online because obviously mm -hmm. it's a bit sterile, isn't it? You're in your room and you're yeah. looking at your computer. But literally overnight, we pressed play the next day, the whole schedule rolled out. We were then doing wow. happy at home from one day test. And I just got customers every day. I could oh, not believe wonderful. it. So I was, it was really hard. Mm -hmm. It was really a massive learning 
it's not even a, not Definitely. in a curve. It was like straight a, up. like straight <laughs> up. Um, but I could start to see how there was a connection. I could see mums in different houses up and down the country and across the world wow. meeting each other, sort of mm -hmm. saying hello on the screen with a six week old and a six week old. And they oh were on a God. screen, but they could feel connection because yeah. they were, you know, and at the same I, point. Yeah. And I had such amazing, joyful experiences where, you know, a cousin met her cousin for the first time on via Zoom. Oh you know, a little God. baby met, met, met a, a sort of a three year old met her little baby new cousin oh. because they couldn't see each other. They were in different parts of the country. Yeah. And like that was really emotional, you know, and like at Christmas, I did like a special free Christmas thing where a granddad and granny in Ireland saw their little sort of grandchildren in southeast London. And oh. I was just like, I felt I felt like Scylla Black. <laughs> <laughs> surprise surprise <laughs> um but it was really wonderful and so there was a bit of a halcyon days time where the first couple of months were really successful i have to say and i almost felt guilty because everyone else was saying oh my god my job i'm not earning any money and i was just getting customers after customer yeah. like just my bookings were just going crazy mm -hmm. but i knew it wasn't sustainable and then the minute the beautiful weather came everyone went so right. it really was feast or famine and i had to make yeah. money when the weather was awful and people were into mm -hmm. it then i earned nothing and so then i sort of worked on a few things that i'd had up my sleeve that i wanted to sort out so mm -hmm. at least i felt like i was doing something for my business yeah um and then um then when all the lockdowns rela relaxed and all the different like I mean, that was hell, like yeah. getting customers in and then all the sanitizing and the temperature taking and the mm -hmm. mask wearing. And that was pretty full on, I have Intense, to say. But I yeah. was prepared to do it, obviously, because I wanted if people wanted the service, I wanted to provide it. Yeah. And course. like, so I did OK, but it's been tougher now than any of that, really. I don't know what's going on, really, I think. So many of us have got ideas about, you know, there's a bit of a malaise everywhere. We're all so sick of all the stuff yeah, and totally. we're all worried about money, like mm -hmm. cost of living and everything. And so I'm having to really think out of the box of where I can take my business while yeah. the bread and butter of my weekly timetable is not that great at the moment. But okay. I, I, I never give up. And no. I would say to all small businesses and especially mamas, um, mm -hmm. oh no, especially women, but, you know, it's like you've just got to keep going. If you love what you do, yeah. you've got to chip away, chip away, and not, you know, you're bashed by this, bashed by that, but mm -hmm. your resilience becomes your superpower. Absolutely. And you've just I got to that. keep going. Yeah. And I just, I'm not going to have COVID mess up my business. No. I'm just really angry Screw with COVID. it. Screw <laughs> COVID. Fuck <laughs> COVID. Um, yeah. You know, I'm just, I've worked too hard and it mm -hmm. feels too important to me what I love doing in my little community here and, and yeah. to other people, you know, that I meet up and down the country through the magic of Zoom and screen mm -hmm. and happy tea, that um, I just So you're feel... still doing that at the moment yeah, as well as yeah. you I mean, it's not. Neither the online or the in, in real life in-person groups are that brilliant at the moment, but I'm still getting customers every day. Yeah. And I just keep thinking if I keep going, Mm -hmm. those things will improve because like it's got to yeah you know but Definitely. it makes me thick skinned it makes me go well come on what else are you gonna do girl because you've <laughs> got to keep this going so yeah. I think in a weird way it's a bit of a rocket as well although yeah. it's quite hard and it's stressful. like a kick up the arse isn't it it is a bit it is a bit because you just can't stand on your laurels you know and I think it, I think it's it's good from an inspiration point of view because it makes you get more creative and think yeah. outside the box like you say and think right yeah. okay well if this isn't particularly going the best for me yeah why don't I try something else and yeah. it helps you push yourself out of your comfort zone it does zone. and it's really I mean that's the word isn't it comfort zone it's so painful because all you really <laughs> want to do is go this is what I do this is mm -hmm. what I love doing and it's always worked till now so why can't I do it <laughs> and, you know but it is painful and it's horrible and it's stressful yeah. but the rewards of pushing it on mm -hmm. are really like you know if it hadn't been for all this I don't think I would put so much energy into my YouTube channel yeah. I you know I, I wanted to have a YouTube channel because 
part of my strap line is music and singing for everyone. So okay. my classes I charge for because it's a business and I want mm -hmm. to earn some money. But equally, I want people to be able to enjoy the singing and the songs that haven't got any money or are yeah. finding it a bit tough at that time. So I, I felt mm -hmm. a bit disingenuous if I wasn't putting something out there for free. Okay. That was of good quality as well, yeah. not, you know, not just thrown out there. So um, it made me really work on my YouTube channel mm -hmm. and it made me create, um, finally get my album onto iTunes and Spotify so that people oh. can download it. Yeah. Um, and do like, just, I was trying to think of little things that were fun for little ones to do that were stuck at yeah. home. And yes, so you've had thousands and thousands of views on your YouTube channel, the amount of people that you must have helped. Like, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, it's a one, I mean, that is such a great feeling, but um, to anyone listening, plug, plug, plug. Um, I love my YouTube channel. The reason I think it looks good is because I found the most incredible company called Quick Brown Fox, a quick plug for them. Okay. If you're looking, if you're looking to do something like that, and I think YouTube is growing all the time, obviously, mm -hmm. um, you couldn't find anyone better than them. They are incredible Aww. and they've been so helpful and so supportive and I couldn't have done it without them, but it they made it so professional. It does like, look, I like mean, I was got your own CBB show. I I was really shocked at how professional it looked because it was me. But, oh but, you know, they sort of, they really knew what they were doing and they were brilliant with the sound. And I'm yeah. so glad that I invested in it because I spent money mm -hmm. on it and I was really worried about, oh, God, it'll just sit there and not, you know, no one will see yeah. it, you know, because it's such a massive market. Yeah. But I thought if I'm going to do it, and this is me, if I'm going to do it, I have to do it to the very best of my ability at mm -hmm. that time. That's yeah. all I can do. And um, and I love it and I love pushing it because I feel like it's, it's quite scary when you're pushing your own business because you feel like you're boring people. But with that, I know I'm helping people because it really yeah, helps a mum who's knackered to put yeah. on a screen. And it's not just like, you know, back backtracking stuff. And it's like a, yeah. it's a real person, real guitar and stuff. And I'm not putting down any sort of children's entertainer, whether they use backing tracks or not. Everything mm -hmm. we do is really hard. But yeah. <laughs> I've just always really got off on voice and guitar. I just love yeah, it. Definitely. And so that's my passion. And so... I really feel okay about pushing that to people mm -hmm. because I know it's helping them. But my plug is if you are interested, like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Little Folk okay. Nursery Rhymes, because I need, because my business is quite tough at the moment. If I can grow my subscribers, then yeah. you start getting advertising and things like that. So it means I'm not charging customers more money, but I might okay. make a little bit that way. So I'm just trying to yeah. think outside the box of not putting, I've not put my prices up at all since mm -hmm. 2020 because I know everyone's struggling, but at okay. the same time, I'm sort of finding it tricky too. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of ways to not bash my customer over the head and charge more <laughs> there, but find other ways to bring that in yeah i'll put i'll put the links in the show notes Thank at the you. bottom for you Thank definitely you, um you were saying cat about like the community that you've built yeah. um, and we were obviously talking about like instagram community and things like that you're a massive advocate and you help so many people like other women especially by supporting them how important is community to you <sighs> Okay, it's kind of everything. And I didn't, you know, I didn't know that when I started my business. Mm -hmm. I just was like, let's start my business, go on my merry way, do my little thing. And yeah. I didn't ask anything of anyone. I just thought, well, that's what you do. You just, you know, it's sort of do it. it's my <laughs> business. It's nothing to do with anyone else. And I'm not bothering anyone else. I'm just plowing on and, you know. And then I started to think, God, it's quite hard doing this all on your own. Yeah. And um, I'd never felt so isolated because when I was working in television, I was in an independent production company and okay. we'd hire in freelancers when we'd got programmes sort of being aired and transmitted and and commissioned. And um, so there was always people knocking about and yeah. you'd have ideas and you'd immediately talk to someone about it. And then mm -hmm. suddenly I was just on my own oh. having all these ideas going, uh, who do I talk to about it? And <laughs> Who do I my, bounce this yeah, off? My <laughs> poor husband was just like, uh, yeah, nurse rhymes are okay. Uh, <laughs> what, you know? <laughs> and he's been incredibly supportive, don't get me wrong, but it's like, yeah. you need to find your tribe with it. Yeah. And so 
I suddenly, I, it wasn't, I sort of got a bit bashed over the head with it. It wasn't, I didn't really realise it until quite maybe a couple of years in that actually that might be a good thing to do. And I just saw through the power of Instagram, yeah. I just saw that a local woman was putting together some like networking events. Oh, cool. Now networking to me was just always like a bit of a dirty word. I used to do it quite a lot with like, you know, Channel 4, BBC and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. they were not always the friendliest of paces it just you know? sounds, i think networking just sounds like people in suits with clipboards yeah. and business cards and people looking it? past you to see someone more important than you yeah that's my only experience of it because i was quite young when i was doing the telly and i never really felt like i had the gravitas i was put into these okay. sort of big meetings but i you know some of the people there were sort of way more experienced than i was mm. so i always felt a little bit like Ooh. and um yeah but then having your own business i remember clearly going to this um there was this wonderful woman called shona chambers marketing okay. and she started off these um new um sort of little get-togethers and i remember going to this first one and i was so nervous Aww. and then when i was there i was like oh my god i found my people oh my god quite a lot of my mates think i'm mad they think i work too hard i work too late they don't understand my drive they're like what you're a bit mad but then I suddenly was around a table of all these other women going, oh, my God, I love doing this. But, oh, you know, I'm still going at one in the morning. Da, da, da. Yeah. And they were sort of I felt like they had the same energy as me and the and same drive. It. And yeah. it just and they just get it. They just okay. get that you want to put all this energy into it. Yeah. And um, so that was a real turning point for me. I suddenly realized that it was a it was OK to reach out, particularly mm -hmm. by Instagram. I really love Instagram. I find Facebook a bit confusing, but yeah, um, I kind of the sort of simpleness of Instagram being a picture, yeah. mm -hmm. a bit of writing, and then that you can immediately find people that are in your sort of remit, you know, yeah, and definitely. that you can find a small business community where you're not necessarily doing any business that's the same similar yeah but the fact is you are on your own you're working your nuts off you mm -hmm. want it to be successful you put everything into it you work all the time you can't quite switch off from it no you're surrounded by people just on this thing and quite often i'll be working at half 12 one and someone will go mm -hmm. you still working cat and i'm like yeah how are you you know <laughs> yeah. and it just makes you feel it gives you a bit of oomph yeah and it makes you feel less alone as well it does, especially and... in like those kind of hours at night time when you're when you've got so many questions running around in your head yeah. to have someone pop on and you'll be like oh okay yeah. someone else is awake well, and, it's sort of, and it's sort of it makes you feel not such a loser it <laughs> sort of validates you that you are you're doing something that's okay that yeah. someone else is doing that for their mm -hmm. business and you're not a total nutter you know maybe i'm not the best person at managing my time and perhaps i should bring that in a little bit and i try to but i think and we all everyone helps each other like the yeah. support on there is second to none it is you know? and it's just such an incredible feeling to to find a group of people yeah. who without question just totally understand yeah exactly and they turn up feel. for you they turn mm -hmm. up for you you go you know you put something out there and then you get someone going are you right babe i've just read your da -da -da. yeah you know and like that's just amazing mm -hmm. it's really powerful and it's a bit i see it i don't think i've ever voiced this before but in the old days where everyone was like talking over the garden gate and things like yeah. that and supporting each other, especially like mums at home at the time of the 40s mm -hmm. and 50s, I really feel like Instagram's my little garden gate. Yeah, I just love it me. so much. And I really, I'm very fond of it. I mean, yeah. equally it's pernicious and it can be evil and you have to be really mm -hmm. careful. Yeah. But I think if you, if you try and run a straight line and mm -hmm. you, you keep true to the things you want to talk about and you be authentic then I think yeah. you can be okay with it but I know we were talking before that it's you feel like sometimes you need to take a break from it yeah. and I think I think that is quite sensible I think sometimes if you fit I'm like we don't all have good days do we I no, think if you're feeling a bit all. a bit a bit raw and a bit vulnerable mm -hmm. that's not the day to spend time to on scroll. Instagram no. <laughs> yeah don't so get if you're stuck in a bit scroll rubbish hole. don't scroll yes <laughs> <laughs> but I do see it as an incredibly valuable tool especially yeah. for small businesses where you haven't got marketing departments you've got no PR spend mm -hmm. and Whilst I know it still costs you money because it is your time, mm -hmm. 
at least I'm not, it's not another cost that I'm having to pay. Yeah, definitely. You know, and so that I found it really, really helpful. And mm -hmm. it's made me much braver reaching out to sort of the influencers that feel sort of specific to my customers definitely. and to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them have been so helpful and so amazing. And I would, oh. I would urge everyone to never give up with that stuff. It's yeah. like, um, I was going to, um, yeah, I just think, you know, just keep going, keep trying, keep trying yeah. with those people that get hundreds of thousands of followers, because mm -hmm. maybe one day something might stick. Yeah. And they are just people as well at the end yeah. of the day, you know, and they're probably wanting their own Instagram accounts. They're probably reading their own DMs. Maybe not all yeah, of them, but, maybe not but all quite them, a but... lot of them will do. Yeah. And I think if you put the effort in to research them a bit mm -hmm. and to follow them, I think if you're not following them and you're not engaging just, in what yeah. they do, I think that looks, I mean, I, I'm not an expert in that, but I think that looks a little bit cold. Yeah, so definitely. So I kind of, I choose the ones that I follow because I really enjoy following them. Yeah. And there's and you a genuine like what they have to say. Yeah, and there's like a genuine thing and that like generally of course for me they're going to either be something connected to motherhood or babies music. or music, you know. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm quite considered yeah. in who I approach. I don't just do like a scattergun no thing because I think that just looks a little bit it doesn't look very genuine no exactly me. and it just looks like you're firing it off to everybody in the yeah. hope that one of them gets back and yeah. you don't truly care about what they say exactly I think you have to really feel and don't get me wrong like hardly anyone replies <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but just the one in five thousand that does sometimes <laughs> can help you know yeah and you only need one really so you only need one and I think you just you just never know and I yeah. think it's always worth a try because you want your business to grow and you want it to succeed. So we've got to, to use... be seen by more people. Yeah. yeah. And so you just have to try everything that you can possibly think of and mm -hmm. just don't rest back. Just constantly be thinking of another way that you can move it yeah. forward. Ah, Kat, you've had you've been awarded multiple awards for your business and deservedly so. <laughs> um, what has been your your highlight so far? Um. I mean, I don't think there's multiple. If multiple's more than three, then probably around that. Yeah, that's multiple. <laughs> multiple's more than one. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I think the one that really tickled me, like I really love being part of the Small Business Awards. And anyone yeah. listening to this, honestly, that's the Small Business Saturday UK team are absolutely amazing. Um, mm -hmm. I just have learned so much from them. I have yeah. gone to events with them that have been so brilliant and met people like you there. You know, yeah. it's just I, I really can't say enough brilliant stuff about them. I think they're amazing. Mm -hmm. But the one that and so I, I, I didn't win anything, but I got nominated, which was really exciting. Yeah. But um, the one that really tickled me and made me feel a little bit proud was uh -huh. um, with all the hoo-ha of COVID and, yeah. you know, having to pivot online and it was really stressful and really scary and I didn't really know if I could pull it off. Mm -hmm. um, I got I got named the top of the list of um, baby and toddler groups online in the wow. independent. And oh my I, God. I know, and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't quite take it in and to be in the list was so exciting and I was just yeah. like oh my god I'm in the list and then someone said Kat do you know you're top of the list I was like no it's just a list isn't it it's just like people <laughs> and then I suddenly realized that next to my name it had Indie Best Buy and no one else had that and I was like wow. bloody hell <laughs> champagne <laughs> yeah. so that I have to say really meant something to me because it was mm -hmm. so hard doing that and for someone to have considered me even part of the list felt oh. really brilliant. Yeah. And then, um, so yeah, that was really great. But one thing I would say at this point is that all happened because of being in a really lovely, like the Instagram community, small business community, someone somewhere in the community had seen that a, a um, journalist had put out a shout to yeah. people that provided music for children. Oh, okay. Now, I'm not all over all those platforms. So they'd seen it on Facebook or something mm -hmm. and messaged me and said, Kat, I've put your name in. I put your name in, but wow. you should follow it up. Mm -hmm. But then I couldn't find, you know, it was Facebook and I was confused and I was like, <laughs> where is it? And 
I tried to find it and then the link didn't seem to work and stuff like that. And I thought, oh, well, I've missed the boat on that, you know. Mm -hmm. And then something in me was like, no, just like it it said something like only contact me by Facebook. Okay. And so I thought, well, I know it says only contact me (laughs) by Facebook. (laughs) I'm I'm not going to do that. (laughs) But I was so desperate to get some attention for my business. I was so worried that it was dead in the water. Mm -hmm. So I found this journalist's um, contact details on Instagram. Yeah. And I sort of checked out that it was the same person. And I thought, do you know what? I might as well, as long as yeah. I'm polite. And I and I, I went in there. And so this is me to all your lovely listeners saying, just try everything. Yeah. Um, and so I I got in her DMs and I was just like, look, I, I, I apologise up front that I am not going to your Facebook. I can't find how to get in there. Yeah, um, I have I tried, really, I promise. Yeah, I have tried. <laughs> I would so love you to come to my groups. I am so passionate about music and singing for little ones. Um, Mm -hmm. I've seen that you're looking for people like me. So Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to drop in your DMs, but I would love to have you. And I just sort of left it like that. And I think the deadline had sort of passed. And I think they'd said, oh, they'll be in touch in a few, like Mm -hmm. maybe like in a a week or something like that. And and then just nothing happened. And I was just like, okay. And then- Did you read the message? Did you see that? I don't know. I I didn't, no, I didn't even, I think, I don't even know if I, it said seen on it. I don't even know. So um, I just sort of thought, well, at least I've tried. And then one night she got in touch and she said, oh, can I come to your session tomorrow? And I was just like- Oh my god! Oh my god! Yes, but, then of course. I, but then I totally panicked because I was like, I didn't have many bookings for that next day, Aww. and I was just like, shit, it's going to look so shit because <laughs> all my other classes have been really full, but the weather yeah. had started to turn. It was like mm. you know more sunny, and I was like, oh man, this isn't going to look good. And then Aww. I just thought, hang on, this is the nature of the beast. Not all yeah. the time are you going to have loads of customers there. Yeah. I will sing to one family or I'll sing to a hundred families. I think it's just as important. Of course, it's terrible for my purse, but, (laughs) you know, this is what I do and I love it. And so anyway, she came along and I up front, I I think I, in the end, I had like maybe four customers plus her. Okay. And so it was fine, you know, and I had a little screen and we sort of all did it. And then we sort of had a little chat at the end and I just sort of sold myself and I said, you know, I yeah. love doing this and, you know, and that was that. So she said, oh, well, thanks so much, Kat. She was so lovely and her little boy oh, wow. was so cute. And um, and then I just thought, well, I've done my best. Mm-hmm. That's it. And then the article came out and I was just like, what? Oh, and the, do you know God. what? That article, it was worth all the traipsing around or trying to find her and working it all out. <laughs> Because that article keeps on giving. It's still Mm -hmm. online and I still get customers saying, I found you in the independent article. Oh, wow. That just shows you how important that kind of thing is because it stays there forever. Yeah, exactly. And so it really is the article and the award that keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. (laughs) Yeah, I was really lucky. So I've had no PR, no media, no press apart from something really amazing in the independent Mm -hmm. and then that just was given given. continues yeah 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 so yeah just don't ever give up oh so Kat your classes are like in person at certain venues have you ever thought of doing like a UK tour it's funny you should say that lovely Michelle Uh, well I I personally I see my summer festival work as a bit of a tour because I get to go up and down the country to all these different music festivals and they've sort of got more each year I've got a few more added and um and so this year I'm so excited that I've got into camp festival I just yeah I just can't believe it because that is such an amazing festival everyone's got such great things to say about it I'm so Mm -hmm. excited to go as a punter I can't (laughs) wait but to actually take my little folk shebang with me Mm -hmm. um yeah I'm really really chuffed and I can't wait but I really like the idea of of having a look at some sort of finding up and down some little theatres, little places yeah, where I could take cool. my stuff. I mean, it's 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 really outside my comfort zone, and being mm-hmm. you know putting all that sort of thing together is a is a big ask. But sometimes you've got to think, why not me? Exactly. Like you know, like you say, yes, she can. Like maybe I can. 
not maybe you can <laughs> yes she can yes, she can. <laughs> yes me can <laughs> but um you know i just really love the idea of of taking it further afield and yeah, in person is such a beautiful thing but equally i am really passionate about taking it further afield online because yeah with the pivoting online through covid i did go to places like france and spain and germany and yeah. like zimbabwe i went to and no dubai way. all through the power of zoom mm -hmm. and i met some such sweet families and just knowing that they're learning a different language some yeah. of them and enjoying it and um, that just blew my mind and it yeah. felt really special i felt mm -hmm. even if i only had one customer booked but they were in like um you know in germany in a little mm -hmm. tiny village in germany hiding oh. away from covid themselves yeah that just blew my mind and it was just yeah. as joyful and brilliant as if i'd had 10 customers you know mm -hmm. because um just the power of music and how it makes people feel and what they can learn from it. And it's um, universal, isn't it? Like oh, you say, you know, whether there's a language barrier or not, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. No. And um, so I really, when I get a bit of time to think, ha ha, with business and, ch <laughs> and ch children and the summer holidays and all that, um, <laughs> I really want to perfect my online provision because I know through the COVID thing, I saw what I can do. Yeah. And so, and you worked I, out the tech. <laughs> worked out the tech, and um, I just really want to grow that because yeah. I'm so convinced that there's a market out there for Absolutely. you know British singer doing nursery rhymes, mm -hmm. and to like the expat communities who are missing being at home, who are missing the yes. traditional nursery rhymes. Um, yeah, I just really feel still that there is something mm -hmm. in that. So Definitely. I've continued online because I just don't want to lose my touch with it. Mm -hmm. So I still do a few sessions a week I offer online. So I wow. still meet customers up and down the country, occasionally mm -hmm. abroad, but not so much at the moment. But I just you know feel what? like I've I got, can do I've it. got a friend in Spain and <gasps> she knows everybody. And oh. I bet that would be cool in Spain. I'll speak to her. Thank you very much, Michelle. <laughs> yes, please, España. See, see, see. All I know is cerveza. That tells you the last time I went to Spain. It was just oh, beer. I don't even know what beer. that means. It's beer. Oh, I don't okay. even drink anymore. That's all you need to know. That's <laughs> yeah, all I need to know. But um, I just really believe strongly that that is a good service to offer. And I'm not yeah. bashful about it. I'm not going to be, oh, no, I couldn't do it. I, I really believe that that's something that could work. Absolutely. So I've just Completely. got to try and harness that somehow. And yeah. again, it's the tech because I might have to use a different platform. So it scared me a bit. But, um, you know, I've got to do it because I've just mm -hmm. got to keep my business going. Definitely. So is that what's coming next for you? Is that like your plans for the future? Yeah, I was thinking I because I knew you would ask me that. <laughs> and um, I kind of so that's definitely to, to sort of host a subscription service is what I'm looking yeah. at. So that kind of thing. What platform I do, I'm still investigating that because okay. there's so many different platforms now and some offer different things and you can grade your provision yeah. what you're doing and so i just really want to get it clear in my head what is the right mm -hmm. way to do that so i'm sort Definitely. of researching that at the moment so that's one thing um i really i just got um really passionate recently about i had some children come across my sort of sessions that have sen needs um okay. And it's kind of the what music can do for them has flipped my heart upside down. Uh -huh. And so I'm really keen on learning how I can do that more, maybe mm -hmm. going to sort of SEN schools and yeah. providing music in a way that is really accessible. Mm -hmm. So I really I feel like I'm at the beginning of my journey on that. But honestly, my eyes have been open to what that can do. And I've fallen in wow. love. I've got some customers who have some pretty full on needs. Yeah. Um, and I've fallen in love with them, with their families. Mm -hmm. And we just have such a lovely time together. Uh -huh. And so that that feels like it's a really important string to my bow that I want to learn. Yeah. Um, and then also with the state of um, the sort of the early years provision in preschools and schools and nurseries is really terrible. I mean, I, I, there are some practitioners that, that are in there already and that's really amazing. Yeah. But 
I think teachers are really struggling about how they meet the sort of music provision. And um, I went to this incredible thing today, which was, um, I'm just learning about it. It's, it's called Merrick and it's the mm -hmm. music educators and researchers of young children. Okay. It's this amazing charity. And I, I've been at a um, conference all day with it. And that's blown my mind as well uh, about like how important early years music is. Yeah. And I you know I won't go into all the whys and wherefores here. It's not quite the right platform, but it's so integral to like speech development and yeah. like socialization and fine motor skills and just mm -hmm. it teaches them so much without even they don't wow. even know they're being taught, you know. Oh. And it's just a joy. So I really feel I want to pursue that side of things as well, taking mm -hmm. my little folk into sort of little nursery schools and preschools. Yeah. So there's quite a lot going on. Definitely. Um, Exciting, and I've still got though. so much passion to push it, you know. It's like yeah even though times are hard at the moment, there's so many different ways that I can still try and run my business yeah. and sort of, um, and, and keep it going. And I think the one thing I wanted to say to all your lovely listeners is that I, the sort of person, I always feel like I'm playing catch up. I always feel like I look out into the Instagram world when I'm not feeling quite so strong and it feels yeah. like everyone else knows what they're doing yeah. and everyone knows the path to go on and they know the right people and they know the right grants to get. But what I've started to learn about myself 10 years in is that I might not be at the head of the field, but mm -hmm. I do get there in the end. And I think yeah. that's really important to sort of tell yourself that, you know, you just have to keep going and yeah. eventually you will get to where you need to go. And it's really hard and it <laughs> takes a lot of backbone and you can't give up, but it is so worth it. And I think, yeah. you know, when you hear, lots of founders talk none of them have done it overnight no you know i listened to not. the incredible holly tucker who you know not fit to lick her feet kiss her shoes she's just absolutely <laughs> amazing and i just listen so much to podcasts about other business founders small business yeah. founders um not necessarily just women i love hearing the men the men's stories too but there's something <laughs> that resonates so powerfully when you hear another small business woman who is a mum who's struggling Absolutely. to keep her, you know, I think it really helps you not feel so alone and you learn a lot, mm -hmm. you know. And I, th I think it's important as well to, to think about not comparing yourself to other people because oh. we're all on our own separate journey yeah and yes exactly. it might make you feel bad at the time if something's maybe not working out for you or if you've lost a bit of direction or yeah. a bit of, you know, something like that is it's yeah. difficult isn't it but it's just a case of realizing that that what you're doing is so different from what everybody else is yeah. because you're the, you're the person behind it exactly you've got to believe in yourself you do have to believe in yourself and like comparison I mean there's so many catchphrases about comparison out there but I think it just sometimes doesn't do you any favors mm -hmm. and then but I do think it is important to be really wide open with your eyes and your ears mm -hmm. and just take on board what people are doing, learn yeah. from what people are doing. You don't necessarily have to always find it a hurtful thing that you're, you know, mm -hmm. oh no, they're doing that and they're doing that. Because, <laughs> you know, you've, you have got to learn. Mm -hmm. you, you've never got it all sussed, have you? I mean, I'm sure no. some people have, but I certainly never have got it all sussed. And, um, and I think it can spark a bit of inspiration yeah. by seeing someone else doing yeah, something Yeah, I well. think we all spark off each other. And I think um, like at this conference today with the early years music, it's like the sort of the whole roles of like mentorship. So mentors and mentees and yeah. what you can learn from other people that are a bit further along in the journey. And yeah. I've found myself, you know, I've learned from so many people who've been so generous with their time and their knowledge mm -hmm. and their experience and everything. And I'm trying really hard. Now I'm 10 years in. I really, I get quite approached by quite a few people saying, yeah. oh, how did you do this and do that? And um, mostly it's really, like some people would be a bit cheeky and want all your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for but free. Generally people, <laughs> but generally people just it's kind of it's like a really big compliment that someone's yeah. paying you if they want to learn from you and so Definitely. I've really enjoyed that aspect of having a business for quite a while now of <laughs> sort of trying to teach other people Nurture ways the of next doing, generation yeah. Yeah. I, I really enjoy that that's something that I never knew I would I never thought I would feel confident enough to say <laughs> oh this is how I've done it 
But yeah. I suppose 10 years in, for God's sake, I should <laughs> yeah, have a bit of bloody... Cap. Yeah, I should sort of go, well, I have done it for 10 years, so maybe <laughs> I have got a bit of an idea. So, um, yeah, I really I really like that because how else do we all grow? And I love all those sort of memes where you've got a woman pulling up another woman's arm, pulling up another woman's arm. Yeah. I just think the power of women is flipping mind-blowing. It is. When it we really all get is. in a room, we make things happen and we yeah. get things done. And, um, yeah, I think, yeah, it sort of blows my mind how important women are. Definitely. Absolutely. Kat, it's been wonderful to talk to you. Could I've you loved let us it. Know, could you let us know where, um, let the listeners know where they can find you, find out more about you? find Absol your youtube channel yeah and absolutely i'm very grateful for the for the platform to do that so basically uh -huh. i wrote it down so that i don't forget anything so okay. what um you can book all my classes via the amazing happity so that's www.happity.co.uk they okay. always have my most current and up-to-date timetable and that's yeah. for online sessions so that's anyone from anywhere can join me and oh. then the in-person ones which are obviously a bit more local to me in southeast london if you can yeah. get there but then i always have my festivals so if you um look at, at little folks sing on instagram i okay. always put my messages about where else i'll be in the country yeah. so you can find me that way um of course there's my youtube channel which i really would love to grow so that's everyone um, needs to like and subscribe like please. and subscribe would be so amazing and i promise they're good quality and your kids will love it yes <laughs> and then also i've got um i'd love it if people downloaded some of the songs from itunes spotify little folk nursery rhymes okay. and then um last but not least i also do parties which um i have done parties quite far afield when people have found me online and okay. you know if i can get there i'll get there um, and so i really love doing that and that's a real joyful thing to kind of go into someone's home or a venue and just have be a little part of their party celebration so that's been really sweet as Aww. well but Michelle, thank you so much. I really love what you do. And oh, the fact that you've you. got your amazing soap sponge business and you do this incredible podcast, I literally don't know how you fit it all in. Like <laughs> that, you really yeah, can do it. That's why we're texting it. each other you really at one can in the do it. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much. It's been a real joy to see you. Oh, you too, Kat. And I'll speak to you very soon. Lovely. Take care, everyone. <laughs>